Joining us now from the CNBC CEO Council Summit in Washington is Jennifer Tejada. She is the CEO of PagerDuty. It's great to see you again. Welcome. Great to see you too, Kelly. Yeah, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is NVIDIA one of your clients? I'd love to hear what they and others are kind of turning to your company to, uh, to do right now. NVIDIA is a customer, but most of the Fortune 100 and half the Fortune 500 are customers of PagerDuty. And that's because every large business, every consumer brand out there in the marketplace is relying more and more on technology to deliver their customer experience. And at the same time, uh, we're seeing globally an increase in what we call tech debt. Legacy systems, infrastructure, that new innovation is layered on top of that creates more and more fragility in these technology ecosystems that we rely on every day, whether we're buying plane tickets, moving money through our bank accounts, or just trying to watch streaming entertainment. Right. And so it, it, my understanding is you guys are kind of on the, I don't want to say the transaction side, but that consumer, that customer piece, right? Trying to make that a flawless experience, really. And, and what are the major threats there? Yeah, so think of us as infrastructure software that helps companies improve their operational resilience. We use AI and generative AI to both detect events coming in, uh, diagnose them, and get the business and that technology to recovery, recovery as quickly as possible so that customers don't feel the burn and so that companies don't suffer revenue losses or labor cost issues as a result of having to deal with these unstructured, unplanned major incidents. They can be caused by tech, net, they, tech debt, they can be caused by cybersecurity threat. But the bottom line is we can't prevent these incidents from happening. And on average, they can cost an enterprise up to $400,000 a minute uh, in either lost revenue or increased costs when they happen. And so the more we can do to detect these events coming in, prevent them from becoming major incidents using the intelligence of generative AI and more broadly machine learning to help our customers respond to them more effectively and prevent the same issues from happening over and over again. It's interesting you say that because in light of the major hacks we've seen with, I think, Ticketmaster being the latest, United Health earlier this year, we asked one industry specialist last week, you know, is cybersecurity failing to do its job? And he was kind of critical of his own industry, saying we need to do better. Do you think that's right? I think we can always improve in every part of the industry, but the reality of the matter is that the complexity is proliferating at a pace that humans can't keep up with. So you need to rely on technology to help, again, not just uh, try and prevent these incidents from happening, but when you identify them, being able to manage and orchestrate your resources more effectively so that you can limit the losses or the impact associated with these incidents when they do happen. Can you give us an example for us non-specialists who are trying to understand this technology? How exactly, you know, as much as you can t talk to about it, are you using generative AI? Um, what is that experience like in trying, you know, where does that software come from? How is it being employed? How can you trust it or train it? And it kind of what are, your, what are your plans with it? Sure. So like many companies, PagerDuty started with machine learning and analytical AI. We collect a lot of information through over through APIs that connect to over 700 of the most popular um, observability or telemetry software sources. We're able to see signals coming in that provide kind of an early warning system that something may be going wrong or something may be abnormal within your technology ecosystem. That can be in your infrastructure, in your networking, in your application layer where customers are engaging with you. We then use AI to help responders who are notified that these issues are taking place to give them an update of what's happening, to provide them with up-to-the-moment information on what's happening within the ecosystem, as well as what's happened in the past that they can learn from so they can quickly try and drive change or improve the health of the environment to stop that incident from happening and to get all systems back to sort of go or in a recovered fashion. And then generative AI can do things like very quickly pull the after action report, pull the postmortem. That helps teams learn from the incidents that happened before so that they don't repeat those mistakes. And more importantly, so that they can um, uh, address or fix the contributing factors that cause the major incident or find you know, the open gaps in their security environment. Sure. Um, that means that every time an incident runs on pager duty, the team's getting smarter, the system's getting smarter, and can get more and more preventative over time. Yeah, do you think you're going to stay, can your AI stay ahead of, of the bad AI? I mean, it seems like that's, it's just going to be one, you know, pitting one against the other. 
Uh, the reality is that no software is perfect and there will already always be issues. And it's about um, increasing your operational resilience yeah. so that when you do are confronted by a problem, you can respond to it more quickly, you learn from it, and you prevent those same issues from happening again. And as you mentioned, you guys have the new AI assistant coming this summer. We look forward to seeing what other innovations might help corporate America fight this plague. Jennifer, we appreciate your time today. My pleasure. Thanks Thank for you having so me. Much,